Welcome to the World Trumpet TV, a world media ministry called to blow the trumpet, to call the unsaved, unreached millions back to God. In a world so broken, so hurting, and so lost, World Trumpet TV is taking the gospel of the kingdom to the nations, redigging the wells of revival and awakenings in North America, South America, Africa, Europe, and Asia, sounding the trumpet for the children of God to arise for a mighty global move of God. World Trumpet TV is at the center of bringing you God events as they happen worldwide global evangelization, and international humanitarian social transformation missions in suffering nations. Together with our friends and partners, we believe this new decade will experience the greatest salvation the world has ever seen. Through our 24-7 inspiration programming via cable networks, satellite, smart TV, smart apps, social media, iPads and iPhones, etc., reaching the entire planet. Join the Trumpet TV family in bringing the lost, hurting millions back to God. Welcome to World Trumpet Television again. I'm so delighted and so excited for what God's doing in the world today. You are in for a wonderful time in the presence of God. Like always, I tell you, go get your phone call and invite somebody, you know, to tune in right now at World Trumpet Television because they're about to be blessed because the guest I have with me today is a mighty man of God who has visited us all the way from Uganda. I have great honor for this wonderful guest that the Lord has brought and your life would never be the same again. If you're a pastor, a leader, you know, a lay believer, or you've been waiting for God to do great and mighty things, this is the greatest moment you've never seen. Invite somebody right here at World Trumpet Television for what God's about to do in your life. And I want to go straight to the great guest that we have here at World Trumpet Television. I get to call him my bishop. I call him my uncle. I call him a mighty man of God the Lord has used. And I don't want to really take away, what, you know, take away from what God has done except to introduce him to you and the body of Christ right here at World Trumpet Television. Welcome Bishop Jerivas Musisi, a prayer palace, Christian Center, Kampala, Uganda. Welcome to World Trumpet Television. I am grateful to be here at World Trumpet Television, and nice having me. What a joy for us that we get the opportunity for us to be with you today, to be able to hear what the Lord is doing, you know, in your ministry, and around the world and what God sends you to the United States to bring with. I am overjoyed, I'm honored that the Lord would bring you our way in what God is doing. I'm honored too, and you know, I wanted to be here before even COVID pandemic, but you know, God's timing is always the best. How is uh, Uganda? Okay, let's talk about that. Uganda is doing well for now because we are recovering from a very uh, deep ditch Yes. Of, of, of COVID-19, you know, when the entire world shuttered down, yeah. Uganda went to what we call a total, almost two years lockdown, total lockdown. When I mean total, I mean the, the, the nation, and yes. more especially the church went into a limbo state. Right. Because there was no gathering, there was no markets, there was no shops, nothing was functioning. Yeah. So, but God being so gracious, he has brought us that far. And now we are back again to normal. Uh, the, 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 the nation is back to normal. Things are working out normally. And the church is back to life again. Bishop, I'm very excited that God brings you here to the United States and that we have so many things to talk about. Right. You know, but I have had an experience and a journey growing up under your ministry. Sure. You know, as a young man, you've watched me, yep. you know, grow into the man that God has made me and I have great attribute to share True. that. True. I, if I've ever encountered, you know, great moves of God, yep. you know, one of those was what God did through your church and your ministry. Sure. And I want to introduce you to the battle of Christ here in America right. to share, you know, about the experiences you've seen God do in the nation. Right you know, through your ministry over the course of almost 37, 40 years of right. ministry. Right. Yes. Well, it's been a long journey, and, you know, this is a journey of faith. Yeah. 
uh, that you know Uganda went through 30 years of civil war yeah. with the uh, Idi Amin yes. and other uh, uh, regimes which came before him. Yeah. So we never stabilized. So we 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 we, we were like oppressed, most especially the born again, yeah. as they used to call us the Pentecostals by that time. Uh, Amin could not allow us to uh, to worship God freely mm. as we ought to, and he, he was against the church. And actually, most of our people were killed, yeah. and others thrown in jail, until the Lord told us to begin to cry out to Him. Yes. I remember very well, he gave us a scripture which is found in Second Chronicles chapter yes. 7, verse 14, that if my people who are called by my own name shall humble themselves and yes. pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Yes. So what the, the church did is to go underground. So we went underground. People could go into the bushes and hide themselves there, crying out to God, fasting in prayer. Yeah. And, uh, and also they could go by the mountains, by the lakeside, to try to hide themselves. You could bypass, for instance, a bush, and you find there are voices of people groaning in prayer, crying out to God to have mercy upon Uganda, mm -hmm. to have mercy upon the people. And God being so gracious enough, he answered our prayer. And yes. the, I mean, was kicked out of the country, and we, got, we ushered in a new a new government, God ushered in a new government, which is now led by uh, uh, General Kaguta Museveni. Yes. And when this man came into um, uh, power, mm. actually he respected God and he honored him and he gave us freedom of worship. And that's why there have been a tremendous revival taking place since then. But don't forget that after Idi Amin, then Uganda was hit by AIDS. If you recall so well, yes. by that time, Uganda was number one nation among all the nations which was hit with the highest percentage of HIV AIDS. Yes. Or I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was 40% of the population infected. 40%. Yeah, and by that time, there was no any remedy, even here in the U.S., because, yeah. you know, we look up to you. But there was no remedy by that time. But now there's, at least there's uh, the R R R R. IVs, yes. which they give to people. But during that time, there was nothing complicated, no medication, no yeah. drug. Yeah. So, 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 so we, we again went back to God and we said, God, what's happening now again? You have saved us from the dictator, but now we see another calamity yeah. which has hit the land. And God says, uh, says that, you know what? Do the same thing I told you to do. If my people who are called by my own name shall humble themselves and yes. pray and seek my face, turn away from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive. So the nation went in prayer. Yes. The second time when yes. another disaster came. Came into the country. Yes. We took up 40 days of fasting. We thought by f taking 40 days of fasting, that will be the beginning of the story. Yes. But it wasn't so. Then we took another 40 days again. We took another 40 days again. This came to 120 days fasting and praying. The entire church, nothing happened until God told us that, you know what? You have been looking up to men, but now is the time to look to me. I'm about to break out in this country. And when I break out, many nations will just see my might arm upon Uganda, and I'm going to heal AIDS. Bishop, we I remember so much well yeah. when you called for men and women of God to come to church yes. as a young man. Yes. Yeah. Our viewers have to realize that yes. while all that's happening, yeah. I'm a young man yeah. and people come in three, four hundred, six hundred yes. every day and night. Yes. And they are crying out to God right. for an answer. Right. Go ahead. Yes, uh, crying out to God for an answer. And then and the whole spirit told us that, you know what? You have been looking up to men. But now it's time to look up to me. I'm about to break out. I'm going to heal this land. Amen. And the entire world will be amazed. Amen. So it, it, the Holy Spirit instructed us to go, to get out of the four walls of the church, to go into the city. Yes. And then this was amazing. He even gave us instructions, begin to print down these words. Yeah. That the cure for AIDS is in the blood of Jesus. Yes. So one Sunday... The entire church was not allowed to go back to yes. their respective places, but it was instructed to go into the city and begin to press those paracards and those posters yes. and handbills, leaflets, yeah. give them out to people. 
So the following morning when the, when the city opened up, it was all over on the walls and everywhere. The cure for AIDS is in the blood of Jesus. The yes. cure for AIDS. And they couldn't believe it. I said, what's this? Yes. And they said, oh, maybe these are the crazy people who can cure AIDS. Yes. Nobody can cure AIDS. Well, by that time, we could not listen to any negatives. We yes. just went by what God said. So we put up a crusade with my brother, Apostle Dale, who passed on to stay with the Lord right now. May his soul rest in peace. And this crusade which was supposed to be for 14 days, lasted for five months. Five months. Growing bigger and bigger and bigger every evening. And then a miracle began to, 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 by, 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 by one woman. Yes. She's, she's even up now, now alive and she's leading a, a, a big church there in Kampala. Yeah. She's known as Ruth. Yes. Now this Ruth came because this was the order of the day. The hospital told us that make sure anybody who comes for prayer must confirm by doctor that is infected. Yeah. So you don't just come and claim that you are infected of AIDS. Not, not, not making it up. Not, not at all. You, you come with medical proof. Yeah. So you had to go, first of all, to the doctors to give you what they call uh, your blood sample yes. results. Yes. So they took the blood sample from Ruthie and she came back with our results and said, you see, I've, I've been found with AIDS. Yeah. My blood is already corrupted. I'm, yeah. inf I'm infected. Mm. So a prayer was given. And then she was instructed to go back to the same doctor yes. to the same hospital yes. for blood sample. Then when she arrived there, yeah. <laughs> the doctor says, why, why are you here? You know, yeah. your, you know your case. Yeah. You are already infected. She said, no, I'm not, it's not, uh, it, now it's a different story. Yes. I have been prayed for and I'm healed. Right. They couldn't believe that. Anyway, she requested them to take our blood sample again. Right. They took the blood sample for the second time. Yeah. They went into the laboratories. They couldn't believe what they saw. They could not track the virus. And then they said, excuse, excuse me, it seems we may have corrupted your blood with somebody as a, as a, a, a person's blood. Yeah. We need to take another blood sample. Yes. She said, well, it's okay. They took again for the third time. Yeah. When they came back, they said, we are baffled. We cannot explain this medically, but I think this is what you people call a miracle. It seems you have no uh, any infection in, yeah. in your blood. Yeah. So she shouted, hallelujah, glory to God. Jesus is the healer. He has healed, he has healed me. So she came back to give a report. Yes. Now, when the news uh, heard about it, they came for the news. Mm. And they say, is it true that somebody was uh, prayed for yeah. and he is now cured of AIDS? We said, of course, yes. So they, had to, they, had, they said, can we have a dialogue with you? And we said, yes. So they they, they came. They came. They made the interviews, and then guess what? It was a Sunday newspaper called the Vision Sunday newspaper. Mm. I will never forget that in 1995, that the cure for AIDS is in the blood of Jesus. Yes, and that was the beginning of the revival in the church, and 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 in the body of Christ. And even those who couldn't believe in the first place, they all came to the church. Yes, for an anointing. Mm. They came for church to get something to go with to go with into their churches until they were explained that, you know what? This didn't just come anyhow. Yeah. You had to pay the price. The people cried to God. People believed God. Yeah. And people gave up their lives. They denied themselves food so that God may heal the land. Mm. So that's why I always tell people wherever I go in the world that if you pray, and you're a serious prayer. Yeah. I mean, you're a, a, a serious believer. Yeah. And if you pray and you believe God, yeah. God always will answer your prayers. Yeah. yeah. Bishop, nothing excites me more like you sh being able to share this wonderful encounter of God invading a nation mm -hmm. because your church has become obedient yes. to the voice that our God is going to fulfill yeah. Second Chronicles. Yes. You know, yes. if my people who are called by my who are name, by my name shall humble themselves. A lot of people pray, and yeah. some of them are watching us yes. you know, right yes. now. Yes. They pray and say, Lord, are uh, you hearing our prayers? Yes. Can you hear our prayers? Yes, you, you can. Have ears and yes, now. Yes, 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 you can. This nation right now yes. is going through a, a deep level of trying right. spiritually, yes. economically. Right. Pastors are seeking the Lord. You're saying, Lord, when are you going to pour out your spirit upon our country? Right. He will. They've been waiting for the promise. He will. And you're here today yes. as a witness, yes. as a revivalist. Right. That the Lord can invade a church. He can. He, he can. can invade a city. He can. Share about that. He can even invade a small group of people who are really hungry for God. 
So, so what I would advise or encourage our fellow believers, wherever they might be, that don't lose hope and don't lose heart. God answers prayers. Yeah. The, the Bible is very clear. If you go to John chapter 15, verse 7, that, that if you abide in me yes. and my words abide in you, ask whatever you desire and shall be granted. Yeah. Most of the time, people pray not the word. They don't pray the word. Yeah. They just cry out to God without quoting the scriptures, without taking the word back to him. Yes. But I've been teaching this over and over again at our church, that if you want to have an effective prayer, yeah. please quote the scriptures. There is, there, there, there is no way you can, you, can, you can just go to God anyhow. Yes. He says, if my people who are called by my own name yes. shall humble themselves and pray. Now, that's, that, that's number one. You have, you have to humble yourself. Exactly. You have to know that I cannot do this just by myself. I need God to intervene in my affairs. Number two, don't just go to him in prayer without the, the word of God. You know, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Yes. In the beginning was the word. The word was given to God and the word became God. You see, in the beginning was the word. The word was God mm. and the word became God. So there is no way you can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can get anything without God's word. Mm. I emphasize that a lot. Mm. I pray, I intercede, but at the same time, I teach the word that people may believe the word. Because if you believe the word yes. in prayer, you are causing God to come and confirm what he said, as he says in his word. Yes. That he sent forth his word in Psalms one zero. Uh, 7 verse 20, that he sent forth his word and he healed his people. So God confirms always his word. Yes. Don't simply cry out anyhow. You must quote the scriptures. You must do that. You have to take the scriptures back to him and say, Father, it is written yes. that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, here I am, I'm humbling before you, O God, move on my behalf. Yes. And God always will confirm what he said because he's willing and he's yes. more than ready yes. to do that. Yeah. My joy today as we speak, because, you know, I'm fascinated about the encounters of God, you know, and, and being able to see what has been, you know, it almost reminds me about the upper room when Jesus tells them, go in the upper room and wait yeah. for the promise. Yeah. And one of those days as they were waiting, you know, a mighty rushing wind and the power of God invaded the upper that room. Place, yeah. You know, and tongues of fire. They could be shown upon them. It's shown up on them mm. for an assignment. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uganda has held, uh, the country of Uganda has held the promises of God. Even when we're going through a dark time, right. God had already promised Uganda that yeah. just like the river now right. originates from Uganda, yes. he, will, he will raise up men and women. Sure. We'll carry on this revival across the world. Across the nation. Which we call the end time revival. And so I have great joy, Bishop, yeah. that I'm sitting here with you because yeah. I, was, I was able to see, yeah. you know, the encounter of God. Right. Uh, it almost brings me back to that moment when I'm hearing sirens. Right. Of, of you, remember, you remember the vans? Yes. Or people that are sick. Yes. They're, they're driving yeah, they're them to the and church. And then drop them at the and church. And they drop them to the church. Yeah. And soon as praise and worship goes on, then oh, they, I feel the anointing of yes, God here. And then they lift up and they and begin they to dance. And they stand up and begin to praise God. And you couldn't believe during that time, these people, because there was no any medication to, to relieve the pain, they could just uh, uh, grow thin and thinner. And thinner. Uh, and then they become like a skeleton. Right. And then they drop dead. Yes. You could see like a skeleton. But it, this is amazing. During that time, these people could be thrown at the church by their beloveds. And, 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 and remember, people, our viewers have to understand, yes. they were not invited to the church. No, 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 no. The no. church did not say, hey, guys, come over here. No, 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 no. They but just heard. They heard that there is a church somewhere whereby God is moving miraculously yes. and is healing AIDS. Yes. And that's why they just had to get all those who are infected. And they said, you know what? There's no any other option except to take you to church. And they were thrown at the church. Yes. And to our amazement, these people who came when they are, they are weak, they, they, they could barely walk. Yes. They were just brought into hands. But through praising and worship. Praising. That, 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 that church had received an anointing and the presence of God. The portal had been opened. Yeah, was undeniable because of the prayers that we have been offered day and night, day and night, because prayer never ceased even yes. up to now. Yes. Day and night, day and night. So when these people were thrown and bumped into this kind of atmosphere yeah. whereby the glory of God is being witnessed, you couldn't believe they yes. could just stand up with, before even they laid hands upon. Yes. They could just stand up and begin to dance yes. and miracles began to take place. Bishop, 
at what point in this journey, I want to, we're staying there because I feel the presence of God there. Yeah. At what point in this journey did you feel we are very close to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Well, when we began the 40 days of fasting and prayer, yeah. it was like normal because you know Prayer Palace, we live yeah. by that name. We yes. live by our name, yes. Prayer Palace Christian Center. That's our name and we live by that name. Yeah. So there is a prayer going on every now and then. Yeah. So we actually, we are founded on three pillars. Yes. The pillar of intercessory prayer. Yeah. The pillar of the word of God. Yes. And the pillar of reaching out to nations. Yes. So those are our three pillars. Yes. So, so when we began to pray the 40 days, we were like a normal days. Then when we entered into the 80 days, yeah. something began to happen. Because we are so expectant yeah. to see God moving, and yes. He couldn't move by that time. Yes. I remember turning to Apostle Dale, and I said, Apostle, did you hear, really hear very well from God? Is it true? Yeah. And he says, yes, he said, pray, and there's nothing we can do, let's pray. Yes. So we took another 40 days, yes. and it became 120 days. Oh, my goodness. Now, at 120 days, then our innermost, the inner, uh, inner word man, yes. and the inner, the inner spirit, the began to do what? To began to become more sensitive right. to what God is about to do. We began to look as if something is ab ab about, about, to to happen. about to happen. So, 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 so then when God says, no, take another 40 days, yes. which made it 160 days, yes. oh man, after the 160 days, he was already there now. Yes. He was already in the camp. It was undeniable. Tumors could disappear, disappear. Uh, heart attack, any kind of healings yes. took place. Miracles upon miracles, deliverances took place to the extent that even the chief priest of witch doctors yes. surrendered their fetishes to God and, and they gave their lives to God. And people began to come into the church yes. and the, the church grew smaller and smaller until we went outside and still it grew smaller until we went outside and it grew smaller and then we said, you know what, we need to go of a crusade. Amen. And that's why we put the church at the clock tower. Clock tower. The clock tower. I remember that. Yeah, that field known as clock tower. It, and you could see hundreds upon thousands. And, and I will never forget this. When God began to move mightily over the city and over the land, yes. we could begin by four in the morning, and they, I mean by four in the, in the evening, and then we end up four in the morning. I have never seen a meeting yes. that begins at four PM yes. and ends almost in the morning. It was there. People are prayed for. I've ever witnessed people, that. I have, like, I, up until then, I had never seen and that. You, and you could, you could not stop the people. And this is what amazed me. Most of the meetings previously, the majority were Christians. But this time, the majority were many believers. Yes. And that was why there were, there were a lot of salvations. People were coming and giving their lives to God. Until the government says, do you know what? You people, you, your people, you have a huge crowd, yeah. and it's uncontrollable. So please, we, we pray that you go back into your respective places. Yes. Yes, because the, 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 the crowd was so big for, for the security. Yes. Yeah. And for security reasons, they said, no, this is too much. You cannot keep on moving during the night like this. Yes. You go back into your respective places. And that's why we had to go and begin to smash those houses which were nearby the church for church expansion, including my own house. Yes. Yeah. 120,000 people yeah. every day yes. for five months. Exactly, for five under months. Under the grace and anointing of God. Of, of God. The presence of God was undeniable. What I loved about it, Bishop, yeah. that I would love our viewers to see yeah. or even I mean, be aware of yeah. is that this move of God was not just in a certain place. I know. It touched the entire country. The entire country. And this is so amazing. And, and the, after this one church, whereby the revival was sparked out to go all over the nation, all other ministers, all other pastors, and evangelists had to come and join into the move. Because you remember, if you recall so well, that every evening after people surrendered to Jesus, uh, 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 pastors could be called to line up yeah. in front of the people and then they tell them to say their name and then their church. Reason for that, that the people who come from their areas, instead of coming to our church, they yeah. could go to their areas. Yeah. So this revival was not just, wasn't only for one church, yeah. it was for the entire body of Christ in the land. Yes. Yeah. No, I witness, I witness that, 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 you know, from end to end, yeah. 
pastors came from all over the country. Exactly. And it was like a well. E exactly. And they mass into it like for a week or two or three. Yeah. And they take it back e into their exactly. regions. Yes. Even and though even those who are doubting this the supernatural hand of God that could heal people even to, to, to cure AIDS, they began to adopt the, uh, our system of prayer and take that system back to their uh, home church. Yeah. Because, you know, they said, how could this happen? And we could testify. It all began by prayer. Yeah. Some people believed in God and they gave up their life for prayer. And, they, and because of this prayer, see what God has done. Yes. And they began that. And that's why now in the land, every church in Uganda is a praying church. Yeah. Yeah. It's a praying church. And you, ca you, you, cannot, you cannot have any church in Uganda which doesn't pray. Yes. Because they have already tested the real weight. They have yes. seen the, the, the supernatural touch of we, God. We, we are, we, it's, it's a praying nation. Yes. Be, because as a result of this mighty encounter yes. of God. Yes. For me, th that blessed me so much because remember that out after that revival, yeah. you prayed for me. Yeah, I remember very well. And say, so you're going to another nation where yeah. God's going to use you. And I remember even the way I prophesied over you. Yes. And I said, I, I, I see God t is telling you that you are leaving this country to go and touch other nations. And the Lord said that you are going to come across many people yes. whom you never knew. Yes. And, and, and the Lord told me that he's going to use you mightily in that land. Yes. And I remember cautioning you that yes. never leave the habit of, of prayer. Of prayer. Never really, forgot that. Yeah, I say that never leave. I have that. never forgotten and that. The, when I came here and I see what you do, I'm telling you, I'm not shocked because I've been expecting this to happen. Yes. Because you never lost the fire. Yes. And that's the good thing with you. You have never lost the fire. Yeah. You have never lost, lost, lost the, the love for God. Yes. As a young man in this country, I've seen many young men come here and they forget all about their calling. Right. But for you, I've stuck to your calling. Yes. You are you are there, right there. And that's what has made me so, so blessed to see you around. Doing the this. people watching us here yeah. right now, yeah. many of them I see hundreds and hundreds of people. And one of the things that come to my heart is hunger. Yeah. Who can linger in the presence of God yeah. for such a long time waiting and waiting? Yeah. You know, because we, are li we live in a culture, and you know that you've been ministering here for a long time. Yes. Where people's patience and waiting on the Lord is so thin. Yes. <laughs> and yet they want a big God to do big things. And yet that's the principle. It's not God to wait on you. It's you to want to wait on God. Yeah. But they do the vice versa. It can't happen that way. That's yes. the principle of God. So it says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble. That word humble is, the, is not just only humbling before God. It includes even being patient. Yes. To, so that you can wait upon the Lord in prayer yeah. to see what God is about to do so that God may direct you and instruct you yes. that you may do the right, take the right path. Yes. Because prayer is amazing. Prayer is communication to God. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is the way you can reach up to the throne of grace as it's written that boldly come to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and help in times of need. Yes. Now, where there is a need, there is always, there is always a demand. Yes. You know, when there is a need that is really oppressing a country, I'm telling you, people will do whatever it takes to begin to seek God. Right. In, uh, 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 sometimes when I compare the so-called first world countries yeah. with the third world countries, in the, the first world countries, there's a lot of options. For instance, here you have got doctors, you yeah. have got ministers, you have got pharmacists, you have got all kinds of medication. Yeah. But now in our case, in Uganda, coming yeah. from a third world country, yeah. some people may, it may take them three days to see a doctor. He can walk for two days to go to the hospital to, to what we call Mulago yeah. General Hospital right. for free medication. Then he goes there and he finds thousands lining up to see a doctor. Yeah. And then he fails to see a doctor for the first day. Then he comes back the following morning, still he fails. Yeah. The third day, still he fails. Then on his way back, he comes across a meeting of people who are clapping their hands, who are up, up putting up what we call open air meetings. Right. And now they are telling Jesus is the healer. Yeah. He's going to heal you if you give up your life to him. Yeah. 
tell me if this man, because of the demand he has and the need he has, will not just open up his heart to receive this Jesus, right. who is a miracle worker. Yeah. And because their expectation is high, yeah. even the move of God and the hand of God comes, is drawn so quickly into yes. their lives. And yes. boom, a miracle takes place. Yes. I remember when I put up a crusade, Sometime back, it was in Tanzania, yeah. and the crowd was unbelievable. You, uh, you could see as far as your eyes can see, and you cannot touch everybody. And I told them, do you know what? I'm, I cannot touch everybody, because it says we shall lay hands upon the sick and shall get recovered. Yeah. But I said, because of the need, and because you are zealous, and you are hungry for God, right. I'm going to call upon the name of the Lord, and the God is going to come by his spirit, yes. and he's going to touch you wherever you are. Yes. And when I say, the, oh God in heaven, the anointing of God hit that ground, and mm. you could see people roaring down, screaming, demons leaving them, and God setting them free. Yeah. So the need and the hunger and desire, if you are zealous for God, yes. if you are hungry for God, I'm telling you, you will be pushed by, the, uh, by, by that anger mm. and by the need you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are going through to seek his face. Yes. But if, yeah. the, the, in this country, there's so many places, and, and we've been in together yeah. you know, for quite some time where we visit different states. Yes. And there's been appetite in different places with pastors and leaders longing to see a visitation of yeah, God. Sure. You know, uh, and they've been praying and waiting. Yes. And, you know, they've been asking questions. Yes. You know, how does revival happen? Yes. Where, where does it start from? And you've shared the testimony. Yes. Of the very beginning of how you dig a well. Yeah. For, lo for quite some time, you haven't found the water yet. Exactly. And you say, let's go deeper. Right. You know, and then you, found, you haven't found water. And then you find a little bit of drop. Yep. And then, you, you know, some people only stay with the drop. And they, they back up. And they back off. They back, yes, that's the only problem. They back off and they, and, and, and they say, maybe this is it. But, you know, God graced us to, in a way that we could not back off. We kept on going and going until a miracle yes. happens. Yes. So I would encourage uh, our fellow believers who believe in Jesus Christ and who believe in prayer that never stop praying until something happens. Yes. You know, the Bible says in uh, 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 Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6, I don't know if I can quote this for them. Yes, you can. Let me, let me try to see here. Yeah, okay. Let me see. You know, sometimes because uh, the uh, waiting may be too much for people, yeah, they, they they back off easily. But Isaiah 62 verse six says, "He who make mention of the name of the Lord, keep not him silent yes. until he makes Jerusalem a praise." A praise. And I always ask people, you people who don't want to pray, has God already made? your family a praise? Yes. As you already made your church a praise? As you already made your city a praise? Bishop, that's so powerful. Yes. Until God makes yeah. your family a praise. Exactly. Then you can say I can give up on prayer. According to and, me. Until God makes your home, your marriage, your husband, your wife a praise, your children a praise. You cannot give up on You prayer. cannot get out of the presence of God. I love that. Exactly, exactly. So I always encourage believers at home, and I tell them that, you know, there are some people who do not believe in prayer because of uh, uh, laziness. You know, when it comes to prayer, it's amazing. Someone can watch a movie for two hours, but he cannot pray for 15 minutes. Yeah but he has the ability and the potential to watch a movie yeah. without even slumber watching a movie. Yeah. But when you say, let's pray, then the spirit of weakness, you don't know where it comes from and jumps over this group, and then people begin to to, 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 to slumber, and the others begin to say, excuse me, can I go for washroom? <laughs> Yet there, at two hours, nobody was even feeling about going to washroom. Yes. Then you wonder, what's this? Then there, we get to know, that we do not war against flesh yes. and blood. All the other times, yes. the eyes are awake. Oh, awake. But soon as prayer comes in, and then they sleep get, comes in. Yeah, exactly. Why, why bishops say, that's a very great point. Yeah. Believers struggle with that. Yes. And there's a spirit of prayerlessness ah. in this country. Why, you as a, a man of God who has taught prayer from prayer palace, yes. why do you think that's so crucial for people to understand why? First and foremost, if you're, if you're going to, to pray, what we call an effective prayer, you must understand that though we live in the physical world, 
but there is another spirit world. Right? Yes. So we live in two, two worlds, the spiritual world and the physical world. Yeah. And that's why the Bible says that though we walk in flesh, we do not walk against flesh. Yes. But against principalities, against powers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. But we thank God for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through Jesus Christ to pull down every the strongholds of the enemy and casting down every evil imaginations that exalts itself against the knowledge of the word of God, yeah. putting, it into, putting it into captivity until to the obedience of Christ. Yeah. So you have to put it into captivity. The stronghold is where? The battlefield is here. In the mind. In the mind. This is where the battlefield is. So you have to go against yes. that spirit. Yes. You have to be a spiritual person who knows how to wage what we call spiritual warfare. Mm. Most people don't believe that, that there's a war going on around us. Yeah. But whether you believe or not, the devil is at work. Yeah. That's why you see a lot of calamities. That's why you see a lot of darkness. Yeah. That's why you see a lot of killings. That's why you see a lot of abortions. That's why you see a lot of witchcraft and sorcery, mm. enchantment, mm. necromancy, stargazers, astrology, all kind of things are happening. Evil is tense. Why? Because the devil is at work. So now if we don't awaken to the reality of knowing that though we are here, we do not walk according to the flesh, then the enemy takes advantage to weaken us. That's true. So this scripture is found in Isaiah 62 verse 6, whereby it says that I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. Yes. You will make mention of the Lord. Do not keep silent. Yeah. I love that. And give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Yeah. So that's where I always challenge the people from. You people who do not want to pray, as God already made your family a praise yes. in the earth, yeah. as he made your church a praise in yeah. the earth, as, as he, he made, made our your, city, your a city a praise in the church. As he made our nation a praise. a praise. If not so, then we need to cry out to God until this happens because he watches over his word to perform it and they have seen it happening. Bishop, I remember, it almost looks like a movie, the very day we had that visitation, right at the city center when this revival happened through your church, Yeah. that for the first time, remember we had just come out of believers being underground. Underground from Idi Amin. And they had been afraid. Yeah. Their faith and fear was so much. Right. They could not much. Right. But the first day when the visitation came, they yes. came, came, it's almost like they came out of the cave. I'm telling you, it's amazing. And there was a jubilation all over, over the city. Yes. You know, yeah. the picture of Jesus marching into into Jerusalem, Jerusalem and the people lifting up the palms was, literally was happening there. in Kampala. Exactly. Because for the first time, yes. the stronghold of our city had been broken. broken, crushed down. Talk about that, Bishop. Yes, crushed down. Uh, you know, being that we, uh, we, we were trained um, by a man who really loved the prayer, yeah. Apostle John Del Barabikubo. We, he, we he, honor that man he, of God. Yes, may his soul rest he, in peace. Uh, you know, you know, he trained us. He said, you know, though we are, od we are not ordinary people. That's what he, first of all, he, he, he taught. And he said, you know what? If you are born again, if you are a Christian, stop taking or carrying yourself as an ordinary man. Yeah. You are a soldier of the cross. And then he says that as you see the natural soldiers in the army, in the marine. Yes. The way they handle themselves is totally different from from the civilians. Yes. He says, you know, you see the way they are dressed up, you see the way they walk, they are always watchful because yes. they have been trained to watch over the enemy to see that the enemy does not attack any time. Right. Then he says, the same thing happens to us as a church. We church people, according to the scriptures, you know, the Bible says, mm. we, we, are, we are also soldiers. Right. Yeah, we have been enlisted, according to Timothy. Right. We have been enlisted in the army of the Lord. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Yes. We are now soldiers of the yes. cross. Now, being soldiers of the cross, the way we think must change. Yes. We shouldn't be like any other ordinary person. The way we talk must change. Mm. Now, you cannot change yourself until you submit to the spirit of the king of kings mm. that he may be able to change you and tune you up to what he desires you to do. Yes. That's why prayer is very hard if you pray in, in, in 
uh, uh, carnally. Yes. You know, the Bible says to be carnally minded is enemy to God. to God. But to be spiritually minded is peace and life eternal. So it's all about God. You have to go back to him and you humble yourself and you allow the spirit of God to begin to use you right. and talk to you and to lead you and guide you. Right. By doing so, you are going to wage spiritual warfare effectively. Yes. Secondly, you must also know that though you are here, there is an enemy who is always against what you are doing for yeah. God. Yeah. Devil is so bitter. He hates to see any Christian rising up to do something. That's why he's always attacking through people and sometimes through, his, mm. through your own people. Mm. They may see what you are doing and then they come against mm. you. Now, if you don't look beyond them, you may think it's them doing it. Mm. No way. It's the influencer because people don't kill because they like to. Yes. People don't steal because they like to. People don't destroy each other because they like to. Yeah. But they're influenced by the spirits, which yes. we call evil demons. Yes. Well, why? Because they are, they are open. When yes. you open up for them, they will use you. Yes. But if you close the door yes. and you look to God, I'm telling you the whole spirit is greater than any demon. Yes. And it can give you power and anointing to pray and even to persevere and to go through. You know, Bishop, I'm excited that we get to hear you share the experiences because I know that for us, it came out of devastation. Exactly. We, we lost our loved ones. Yes. We were devastated. Yeah. We came to the end of ourselves. You remember walking on the streets, just jumping over dead bodies. The jumping dead bodies. When people get to hear us, yes. you know, they, they say, what is that? Yeah. You know, America is in crisis. Yeah. America is going through. And I believe this nation, the believers, the church in America cannot survive this crisis without calling on God seriously. I'm telling you. The games are over. And I'm telling you what we are saying is right. And that's why we as seeds planted by Americans, I don't know if they know that. Yeah. We are a result of their forefathers' obedience to, to come the, and to bring the, the, gospel, the gospel to Africa. To Africa. Because remember, I always teach the people that we were colonized by Britons. Yeah. Now, when the Britons came, they brought religion. And we got divided in the land. That's why you see uh, there's what we call Anglicans. And then there's what we call uh, Catholics. And there's what we call Muslims. So anybody who came to the land, he came to grab people for himself mm. so that we can be put into what we call religion. Yes. Not until the Americans entered into the land. I'll never forget that. And wherever I go, I remind them that God is calling you again to take up your role because God has raised this country to be number one in the world for a divine reason, that they may call the world back to God. Yeah. So now if we come here and we see our forefathers who preached to us, who said, if you pray, God will answer you. If you fast, things begin to happen. And for them, they say, Prayer doesn't work. We get amazed and we get so heartbroken. We live in a country where prayer has been kicked out of school. Yeah. It's been kicked out of different institutions. Right. And, and, and the only reason why that happens is because when the enemy wants to shape the next culture where we're in today, yeah. which is highly rebellious with all of so many issues that are affecting this nation, right. you know, you know he wants to cave America down. Exactly. That's, and that, and that, once, that's what God brings you to yeah, America, to yeah. bring this message e to this exactly. nation. And, and that's the plan of the evil one. But you know what? There's still hope in this land. Because to every generation, God has his remnant. I believe there is a remnant in the land. And who, can even, who are hearing right now even this message? Yeah. That, do you know what? They can begin to mobilize. It all begins with the two people. Actually, with one man. It took one man to deliver the king of Israel. And that was Moses, who obeyed God yeah. and went to Pharaoh. And he says, let my people go. He took one man again, uh, for, who, known as Gideon, to, 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 to deliver the king of Israel. Always, it's always one man. It will take one man in this land who will hearken to the voice of God and obey God and say, you know what? Even though we are not many here, let us gather and let's begin to cry out. And because of God's grace and mercy, God is going to pour out his mercy upon this land once again. Yeah. That America will again go back to her calling. Because, you know, I always teach people and say that each one of us, as nations, we have been born for a divine reason mm. uh, and purpose. But where the purpose is not known, abnormal use is inevitable. 
I always tell people that's why you hear about child abuse, yeah. women abuse, nowadays men abuse, office abuse, pastor abuse, power pit abuse. Yeah. People do that because they never knew the purpose why that was put into place. Yes. If you do not know why America came into formation, you are going to abuse her. Mm. If you don't know why I'm here right now, you are going to abuse me. Mm. If I don't know why God allowed you to come and establish wild trumpet uh, TV, I'm going to abuse you because yeah. I don't know the purpose. Where the purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Yeah. And that's why you tell me right now that prayer was kicked out of the school because the people who are right now, we, we, whom we call the, the, the grandchildren, because remember, this country is the number one country which was formed on biblical principles. Yeah. Now, when they, the forefathers did a great work, and now when they went, and now the settlers came, mm. they never even knew why. Because always pioneers face the hardest blow, but when the settlers come, they just enjoy. They don't even know why America was put into formation. But we are here to remind them that this nation was put into formation to lead the others to God. Yeah. That's why wherever you go, there's a great respect for America. Wherever people call upon America, I mean, wherever there is a disaster, wherever there is calamities, we get aid from here. Right. We get medication from America. And that, that kind of love was a seed which was planted by the forefathers, the, the pioneers of this land. The, 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 those, those patriarchs yeah. who began, who formed this nation. That yes. seed was yes. planted, and that's why it's going on up now. But now God wants that to escalate and be turned spiritual, that people be, be, may begin also to, much as we are helping others, where there is war, you see Americans come to save, where, where there is a famine, people, they come to help. But now also, we need to go back to the cardinal purpose, because what does it benefit a man to, 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 to enjoy the entire world and he loses his soul? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we live in a time, Bishop, and you know, going back to what we've talked about, is uh, we live in a very critical time in America. The spiritual climate has changed. Yeah. 60,000 churches closed. Wow. You know, the landscape right now needs a visitation of God. Right. You know? Right. And, and this visitation of God is going to be different from all. Right. America's not new to visitations. There's right. been so many revivals that course, have, have taken course. place here. Of course. You know? Yes. And I believe it's very, very, very important for us to share with the, our viewers tonight, you know, that the coming days, it's going to take a real man. Exactly. And a woman. Right. You know, or prayer. Yeah. I spent a great deal with you, you know, for the, you know, almost 35 years. Yes. One thing I've loved about you yeah. that's been key to my ministry in North America, yeah. you are a man of prayer. Yeah, without prayer, nothing At 5 a.m. Yeah. in the morning, yeah. you wake up to pray right. for hours. Yes. You lead a praying church. Yes. There's a pastor here today yes. who's believing God to see a church growth. Yes. But he doesn't have that experience right. or prayer. Right. Because in America, there's a mechan mechanization right. of how you run ministry. Right, right, right. That, that you do it less on prayer, but less on programs and less of everything. On, on administration. And it yeah. cannot work. Yes. And especially right now. Right, right. Where the, the enemy has reason. First what of, would you share with the pastors and leaders today yeah. who need a true word of God yes. that will wake them up to lead a first century church that deals with the demons yes. that we are facing today? Yeah. For, for first and foremost, people should understand that Christianity is not a religion. Yes. Christianity is not a religion. Yeah. Because religion, you can go by the setup. You can go by the setup uh, of of what uh, of uh, of uh, its formation, but when it comes to the to the kingdom of God, yeah, this is a kingdom pop, uh, business. We're talking about kingdom uh, uh, business. Yeah, it's totally different from just a church. Yeah, or from just a faith. Yeah, now we are talking about God's kingdom. Yeah then we have to abide by the, by the principles. Yeah. Because there are principles that we should be adhered to in order for us to experience the move of God in our lives, right. in our cities, and in our nation. And when God looks down here, he doesn't even look at the politicians. He's looking at the church. 
Because remember what Jesus said in John chapter 10. He says, I know my sheep. And they can also, and I know them by name. Yeah. And, they, and, and, they, and then he says, they also know me, know me by voice. Yeah. That they can identify my voice. Yeah. So now God has got his sheep here. Yeah. He has got the people he paid the price for who have illuminated right now to the reality of the truth of the gospel. Yeah. Who should be able to lead others into what we call revelation yeah. of prayer. Yeah. Uh, 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 and, 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 and secondly, people must also believe and accept yeah. that there is a war going on around us. We may not see it physically yeah. with our naked eyes, yeah. but it's there. Yeah. Because demons are real. Yeah. You know, most of the people here deal with the headache spirits, fever demons, but at home, you know what we are battling with? Yeah. We are battling with the principalities. Yeah. I was in Mwanza, and one of the witch came, and it could, it could stop, it could, it, could, it could cause rain to come down yeah. when I'm preaching. So if you, are, if you don't know spiritual warfare, I'm telling you, you're going to run away from that person. Yeah. But I took my stand and stood in, in the authority of, on the foot of the word of God and in the name of Jesus to rebuke that woman. Yeah. And the demons left her and that rain which was coming all over yeah. seized and we preached the gospel. Yeah. So, so they have to understand that, that they, and even demons, they don't want them to know that they are around. Yeah. Because some people said, you know what, I don't want to talk about demons. Even if you don't talk about them, that doesn't mean they are not there. Yeah. They, will, they are always there and their work is to steal, to kill, and destroy. Yeah. That's the work of the devil. Yeah. But Jesus says, but I have come that they may have life and life it more abundantly. Yeah. So now, yeah. we need first of all for people to identify where the enemy is. If you do not identify where your enemy is, it's very hard to win the battle. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah. okay, just a quick, a, quick, a quick example. Why do people end up having, doing drug? Yeah. People end up having cocaine. And some people say it's out of frustration. Okay, I could I accept that, but is everybody frustrated doing that? Yeah. The influencer, when the influencer comes in the body, because we are the temple yeah. of the living God, the, the church which is built by hands of men, that's a sanctuary whereby we gather to talk to, to, to be able to, to talk to God yeah. and to be instructed. But yeah. the house which was built, built by God's hands is you and I. Yeah. We are the body of Christ. Yeah. So the Bible says that we are the temple of the living God and the yeah. Holy Spirit lives in us. Right. Now, if we are the temple and the Holy Spirit lives in us, there, we must then right now realize why are we the temple and why the Holy Spirit lives in us. Yes. It does not just live in us just to enjoy ourselves. No. The Bible says you shall not die, but live and do what? Yeah. And declare his works. Yeah. We are here for kingdom purposes. Yeah. We are here to take over lands back to God, yeah. which were taken by the enemy. Yeah. But how do you do that? You do that through prayer. You do that through evangelism. You do that through other activities of reaching out to the needy. Yeah. That's how we win many to Christ. Yes. So, Bishop, you know, as you, sh you continue to share about this, you know, um, I'm very much reminded because, again, uh, because of time, the journey of, you know, during the time after the revival, God gave you a mission, you know, of evangelism all across Africa. Yeah, Mission 2000 is reaching, mission out, 2000. reaching out to 68 million souls. I remember that very well. And we have some pictures on, on the screens, yeah. you know, of those meetings during that time. Yes. I was one of those people yeah. on some of those crusades. Yes. I think we traveled together. Right, I, right. Every time there was some great event, you, had to be on you never company. leave me. Uh, I never want to stay home. Of course. I want to go. Of course. You know, I want to be where God's moving. Exactly. I'm a hungry young man. Yeah. I need God. Yes. Not knowing that all that time God was preparing me to come to a different country where he would use me. I'm telling you. It's you see? Yes. Yep. But this has been your heart. Right. This has been your mission. And I love our viewers. Yes. To know what God has been using you because it's very key to why God has sent you to the United States. Right. And right. remember, you, when I was picking you up at the airport, I told you God has given you a message to the United States. Sure. Sure. 
You know, and, sure. and so many people are watching us. I'm seeing the lines go for off right now. Right. And they're wanting to hear right. what is the message from Bishop Jurivas yes. to our nation, especially a devastated nation. You yes. led, your church led a, a, a nation in devastation. Right. America is in devastation. Right. How do we... How do we release the spirit of God across believers and saints and leaders in this country to awaken again and believe again uh, that this country can be revived and yeah. God's purpose can go forward? First of all, I have faith in this country because I strongly believe there are some men and the women of God, even right now as we talk, they are crying out to God. And their cry is the reason why I'm here. Because God used people to touch people. Yeah. God used people to speak life into their lives. Yeah. He says we are the mouthpiece of God. And today as I'm talking right now to somebody who may be there listening to me, I want to say these words to you. If you are a minister of the gospel, if you are a pastor, do not lose hope at all. Jesus is real. And he never called you to fail you. He called you that he may use you what he has already determined before, before even uh, they, they, they began. But this is what I would like you to, uh, to, to, to maybe advise you, that I know you have been praying, but now you, are, you need to take an extra mile. There's what we call the cost of a disciple. Most people do not want to pay the price. Things, you know, depth calls for depth. You remember when Peter after Jesus preached the gospel in Luke chapter 5, and he says, Peter, I know you, to you toiled all night and you caught nothing, but now launch into the deep. And you remember the response of Peter. He said, I toiled all night and caught nothing. Then he said, I said, launch into the deep. And the moment Peter heard him speaking with authority, then he says, okay, I, I, I'm going to launch in the deep, not according to my experience, Remember Peter, according to the theologians, they say he, he had an experience of 38 years of, ship, uh, of fishing. But he said to, to say, I'm not going to use my experience, but I'm going to launch in the deep according to your word. So time has come that everything which we learned and the experience which we may have copped from others be put aside and we begin to seek the face of God and because of that intimacy and that relationship between you and God, God is amazing and awesome. He's going to release his spirit and he's going to begin to speak to you specifically yeah. for divine missions to say, be here at this time, go there at this time. Because I'm not here because I want to be here. I'm here according to God's divine plan and purpose. Therefore, I want to encourage you, pray like you have never prayed before. Believe in the word of God. Teach the word of God. Let people begin to know that the word of God is the truth. There is no any other truth than the word of God because heaven and the earth shall pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. That's why the devil fears nothing but the word. So continue to pray. Continue to cry. He's going to give you grace. You know, God is interested in people who are calling upon him. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, he's waiting to hear them cry out and he pours out his spirit. I can sense in the spirit right now, there's a mighty wind of revival coming upon this land. And it's going to sweep this land like a bazooka in a way you have never seen before. God is suddenly appearing to people who are crying out to God right now. Yes. So just get ready, get ready, get ready for the move of God. He's about to break out. Do not surrender. As the scripture says in Isaiah 62, 6, that those who make mention of the name of the Lord keep do, do, do not, do, uh, do not give, keep, give, give him rest until he makes Jerusalem a praise. So pray. Keep on pushing. Like a woman who's under pregnancy, she pushes until that baby is bathed. The time is now. Just rise up, look to God, believe God, and teach the word of God. The word of God is so powerful yes. to, pro, in, in prayer. That's what we use most of the time. Yes. Bishop, I'm so excited to have this great time with you. That's one of the reasons why, you know, because of this journey of watching you, the, you know, of the ministry, you've come into America, you've been preaching at many churches, you're still traveling in the next, you know, several weeks, you know, sharing with pastors and leaders. And in September, 
you know, the 24th, we have, you know, the Unity 23 International Media Day. The reason for that media day is to gather Christian networks like ours, World Trumpet Television, and so many other networks to unite together, to reach the entire globe. Two, three billion people who have not had the witness of Jesus. I'm excited about that. I'm excited that, that we can talk about the spark of the Holy Spirit and the moves of God that have taken place in Uganda, both in the United States. We're excited that we're living in the time where the enemy thinks, you know, uh, he's got a grip on the, on the planet. But no, he doesn't no, have a grip. No, what? We've seen no. what God can do. Exactly. We've seen miracles, signs yeah, and wonders. Yeah. I saw people who came in like they had dropped dead in your church. Yeah. And this, just by praising, even before the word comes. Exactly. And they rise up. I believe, now I believe the, 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 the scripture about the dry bones. Yes. Can these dry bones live again? He can. Can God revive he can. America again? He can. We have seen it. Yes. You know, we have witnessed it. Yes. And I'm so excited that you get to be able to share this firsthand. Right. I remember you and I were in California. We were filming America's Last Option. Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. You know, and we were sharing with America how you revive the family. Right. How you revive the church. Right. How you revive a city. Sure. And the nation. Right. We are believing God for saints all across America to rise up right now. Sure. And pray. Yeah. For this nation, sure, we cannot let the enemy have his way. Right, right. No, right. we can't. America, we cannot let this nation be taken in the hands of Lucifer and all his agents. We've got to rise up. Your church has got to be raised up. That's why I'm excited to have Bishop right here at World Trumpet Television sharing about the experience of what God has done. And in the midst of that, God has given you a prayer center, exactly, an international church that you're building, a 5,000-seater church in Sh Uganda. Talk sure, about it sure, yeah, sure. as they're sharing the pictures, you know, the pictures of your church in Uganda. Yes, when we began to grow uh, uh, w before COVID, uh, the Lord gave us grace and we began to put up a church. Beautiful church. Yeah, beautiful church. And, uh, and uh, we are not yet done. It's you're, st you're still building it. Yeah, because halfway is roofed. The other half is not yet. Look, look at those thousands of people right now. Yeah. I want you to show the people. Yes. You know. Exactly. Thousands of people still come while you're building it. Exactly. We haven't done nothing. We haven't, we haven't finished yet. We haven't yet. even finished yet. Yeah, but they're coming. So, so then uh, at the same time, you gave us grace to be licensed in Uganda to have a radio station. We do have a radio station, Dunamis which means, it's a Greek word, which means extraordinary, miraculous power. Dunamis 103 FM, and also, just recently before I flew in here, we were given uh, permission and license to run a regional television. This is going to cover five nations. Five nations. And um, we are eyeing at uh, 500 billion people. 500 million, million, million 500 people, million people. Million people. That's what we are eyeing up. From a church that God has used through prayer, through prayer, yeah. Now God's using it through radio yes. and television right. to blanket all of across East and Central Africa. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And and God has been so gracious. So that's why I'm here right now to look for people who can partner with me to see that we can be able to accomplish the vision. Amen. Uh, yeah. We need to roof our church. We need to to put up this, uh, the, the regional... Uh, Finish the TV station. The, the TV station. And we also run uh, a school with 400 kids. Right. These are the, the, the least privileged children. Right. Some of them are totally orphans. Yes. And others are having single parents. But they're living in rural areas whereby uh, the dream of uh, education is never realized. Right. So, so, so that's where also we need to see that. So, so you sit in so many offices. Yes. You run a, a thriving church in the city. Yes. Building a 5,000 member church. Yes. A, a, a new TV station and a radio station that yes. has been running for almost 20 years. Right, right. And you have a school. Yes. You know, that's going on. Right. And you're a bishop of 375 churches. Yes. Here you call them satellite churches. At home we call them branch churches. Branch churches. All over the nation of Uganda, north, south, east. And God has graced us that way, but through prayer. And I always encourage people that where, where theology fails you, 
neology will never fail you. A matter of prayer. By that I mean to say prayer on your knees will never fail you. Yeah. God is gracious. And uh, I, I'm here today feeling in my spirit there's somebody there listening right now whom God would desire to partner with this great ministry at home. Yes. To be, to, to, to be uh, what we call destiny helpers. Yes. Because God to every generation has uh, his remnant. Right. And I strongly believe that Moses was a man of God, given a great vision, mm. but God had to give him his destiny helper, right. known as Aaron. Yes. Because you remember, he was a stammering man yes. who could not bring out exactly his vision. And God says, don't mind. You have your brother Aaron. He's going to be your spokesman. Yes. You see, yeah. So to every man whom God raised, he gave him a destiny helper. Right. So I know there are some destiny helpers here who God is right now speaking to you to be part of what God is doing on the other side of the world. Yeah. So that what is happening there may also be tapped into this land and into your church and into your family and into your house. Because this is what I know for God. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man plant, he must reap. That's what I believe. Amen. I am so excited to have Bishop with us today. I mean, even time could not let us unwind, please. I mean, all of the testimony upon testimony. A lot of people have invited you. One of our friends, Summer Day, you know, she's a woman of God here in the city that God has given the vision of, you know, bringing back the revival of the word. Yes. And she's going to be with you this coming week. That's wonderful. You know, God has given, when, I, when we talk about revival, we also talk about the revival of the word, bringing exactly. God's people into e the word exa of God. Exactly. And, and so for me, I'm excited that the Lord would be able to send you to us in yes. the United States right. to remind us the importance of returning to God. Yes. The importance of no of reverence yes. to God. Yes, yes. Coming back to our knees. Yes. The truth of the matter is, yes, the world has looked to America yes. for a lot of answers. Yes. But right now, America is going through. Yes. And we need to be the one coming in. I share with so many pastors, and some of you know who are watching right now, right. you know, that we who have been sent as missionaries right. now need to lift up the hands of America. Exactly. Because when we were in crisis, remember, T.L. Osborne came yes, and so many one. others came. No. We were in deep crisis. Crisis. There was I, a stench of blood. Right. And actually, I remember by T.L. Osborne's visitation to the land, he prophesied over that land that uh, as, you know, he, he came when the land uh, had no paved roads. And he, he said, I, when I was coming from Entebbe Airport, to, to the city of Kampala, uh, I've seen a lot of pit holes in, this, in, in, in the roads, and the road told me that you see these pit holes, that's exactly what the hearts of Ugandans are. And he says, you know, if you, only you can repaint and come back to God, God is going to heal this land, and the, everything is going to be turned the other way around. And that was, he said that after seven months, takeover took place, mm. and the bottle was overthrown, and then another government was ushered in. I'm telling you, we are here because we have been so blessed yes. by the American missionaries yes. whom God sent to us. And we hearkened. And because we hearkened, see what God is doing. Amen. So we are reminding you as well, America, do not lose hope at all. It's not yet the end of the story. It's just the beginning. God is calling his people back to him, but we come back to him through prayer. And through prayer, things begin to happen. Because when you pray, God communicates well with you. Amen. Amen. That's all what I can do. I'm excited okay. for this time, Bishop. You know, we'll be back again very soon. We'd love for you to bring the word of World Trumpet TV as often, as often, as often, as often. Thank you. But we have people that uh, right now needing prayer. Yes. They've heard the word. They've heard what God can do. Yes. Now we are believing God with them. Yes. There's a number on your screen right now you can call if yeah. you're needing prayer. You're a pastor, you're a leader, you need to be revived. You know, the, what the scripture said that revive us again that we may return to you. Yes. So that the, re, we may rejoice yeah. in the Lord. It's, it's the rejoicing right. that's, that comes back. I know what revival, I, I've normally defined revival bishop this way. You know, I want to repeat it because it excites me when I say it. It is when they bring a dead body. For example, they bring a dead body that is halfway dead. Right. Halfway dead. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And when they, it's that, that body is not completely, there's a still a pulse. Right. And when the paramedic come in and they rush to the body, 
they want to find out if the feet are still warm. If the feet are still warm, it's a sign that the blood is still bl blood flow. Circulation. Circulation. Mm. And then they come into the neck. Mm. They want to sense the pulse. Mm. I'm using a spiritual metaphor for somebody who's watching us sure, here. Sure, sure. If they can trace a little bit of a pulse, yeah. what are they going to do? They're going to get their machines, yeah. the electrical machines. Remember, our bodies are electrical. Right, right. And they're going to come and punch almost, I don't know how many volts yeah. into the body. What are they trying to do? What they're trying to do is to make sure that this outside electricity connects with the, the little bit of electricity that's still left in the body. And when those two meet, yes. the body goes into shock and the person who is on the verge of dying wakes up. Right. There's so many people today in the body of Christ who are on the verge, or a little bit of it. Even Revelation says, strengthen that which remains. Remember that, Revelation 3. Yeah. Strengthen that. God said, I know your works, I know everything, but you are dead. Right. But l revive the little bit that's left. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what God's telling us right now. Right. And it's the Holy Spirit, right. the electricity of the Holy Spirit that's going to punch into our spirit mm -hmm. and it's going to revive us again. Right. God's not condemning us for what happened a long time ago. He said, right. I know you have a little bit. Right, right. The little bit of life, a little right. bit of joy, a little right. bit of spirituality. Right. But if I can revive you again, right. what's going to happen? Yes. I believe that Spirit of God saying to us, church, let's stop feeling like all is gone, all is gone. Yes, we're going through a mighty warfare right now. Yes, we're going through a mighty everything. Yeah. But God says, allow the Holy Spirit to invade your life right now. And when he invades your life, yeah. all he's going to do is shock you up again. Right. And if he can shock you, what happens? Yes. Your life will be realigned again. Again, sure. Because, you know, there's no way God can judge his people right now. This is not a time for judgment. Uh, we are in a grace dispensation whereby uh, uh, we, if we go by, by uh, Jesus' uh, mission statement, which is found in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, he says, You shall bring forth a son, we shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who shall save his people from their sins. Right now, what God desires is to see that all of us, even those who are listening, open up our hearts and receive him in our lives and begin to accept to go by his lead as he leads us by his spirit. Amen. It's very hard for you to be a minister. Actually, someone said, who, he who speaks much about God to people must also speak much about men to God. Yeah. You see, if you speak much about God to people, you must also speak much about men to God. Thank you. You cannot say, I'm a minister, but I was never called to prayer. I hear people say that. That's totally wrong. How could you be a minister? Because a minister, you are a priest. A priest means you stand in the gap right. between man and God. Yeah. So that you can reconcile man back to God. Right. So every man, every minister, every pastor, every believer is called to prayer. Right. There's no special people Amen. who are called for that work. Amen. No, they, those who carry themselves as special, reason being that they have offered themselves into that area and they have taken that, 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 that path. Yeah. That's why they, sometimes they're known as the prayer warriors. But yeah. each one of us, we are entitled to prayer and we have been called to prayer. Yeah. Because how could you go to God? How could you communicate without prayer? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Bishop, we've been excited to have you and uh, looking forward to the great more times of ministry, you're going to be traveling. Sure. People can find, how do people find you? Yeah. You know, the website is on your screen. The yes. The name of the church, yes. Prayer Palace Christian yes. Center. Yes, yes, You know. Right. And it's been an honor to serve, you know, alongside you and everything that God has been doing. Yes. In your ministry. And right, right. Even those who would like to meet with me, they can call uh, uh, your number here. Yes. At World Trump, Trumpet TV. Yes. You can easily call me or reach me up. Amen, yeah. amen, amen. Yeah. You're going to look in that camera. You're going to pray for men and women of God. Okay. This, this has been an inspiration, yes. an encouragement, an empowerment. Right. You know, I fence the spirit of God here. Right. And the Lord, you know, who sent you here is using you right. to revive the church in the United States of America. All right. Well, we are going to pray. And let's pray. I strongly believe that there's somebody there who have been listening and there's somebody who is in need of, of prayer. And I'm going to pray with you. And God is going to move beginning from now. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I commit your servants who are listening right now. 
I commit your children who are listening right now, who are in dire need, Father God, to see you move on their behalf. Holy Spirit, now is the time. Move right now across the land and convict man of sin, of judgment, and of righteousness. Draw men to yourself by your spirit, for you said every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Lord, I command every knee to bow right now before you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I command every tongue to confess that Jesus is Lord. Lord, I know for real and for sure there are some people who may be scared right now, who may be, Father God, in terrible Father agony, who may be who may be uh, under attack of the enemy. I take authority right now as it's written that the order I've given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means overcome you. I address you principalities, I address you powers of darkness, I address you spiritual weakness that you have no legal authority over God's people. Loose them right now. Go and come back no more in the mighty name of Jesus. My God, my Father. My God, my God. You said in Psalms 107 verse 20 that you sent forth your word and you hear them. I release your word now now to be impregnated into their tissues, into their marrows, into their pancreas, into their kidneys, and create life. I speak life right now. I speak health right now yes. in the name of Jesus. Mm. My God, my Father, I cover them right now with the blood of the Lamb, that when the angel of calamity is passing by, they shall be spared out because of the love, the blood you shed at Calvary. I decree and I declare a release in the spirit. I decree and I declare a release physically. Yes. I decree and I declare a release financially. Father, to be all the glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Bishop, we thank you for being with us. Thank you for taking your time to come and be part of what God's doing. And we're excited for Pleasure. your ministry and how God's using you both here in the United States, around the world, and in Uganda. And Pleasure. saints, Pleasure is Lord, mine. we bless the Lord. Thank you. We'll see you again at World Trumpet Television in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that you've been blessed. Amen. Be part of Unity 23 coming up September 24th. Thank Christian you. media all over the world, radio, podcasters, all of us who do what we do for the kingdom Amen. because the opportunity has been given to us, the church, to do great and mighty things. See you again here sometime, World Trumpet TV. Welcome to the World Trumpet TV, a world media ministry called to blow the trumpet, to call the unsaved, unreached millions back to God. In a world so broken, so hurting, and so lost, World Trumpet TV is taking the gospel of the kingdom to the nations, redigging the wells of revival and awakenings in North America, South America, Africa, Europe, and Asia, sounding the trumpet for the children of God to arise for a mighty global move of God. World Trumpet TV is at the center of bringing you God events as they happen worldwide global evangelization, and international humanitarian social transformation missions in suffering nations. Together with our friends and partners, we believe this new decade will experience the greatest salvation the world has ever seen. Through our 24-7 inspiration programming via cable networks, satellite, smart TV, smart apps, social media, iPads and iPhones, etc., reaching the entire planet. Join the Trumpet TV family in bringing the lost, hurting millions back to God.